In my previous video, I started to refactor this um, product catalog from my book Magic PHP in chapter 10. So I'm refactoring the code I've got in my book to an object-oriented version of the same <clears throat> of the same product gallery. What I did in the previous video was I created a PHP class to model one row of data. So I've got this database table going on here that um, that's really the basis for um, for the gallery, for the um, product gallery. And in my previous video, I created a product class to model one row. What I'd like to do now is create one more class that models the entire table. So um, with that class, I want that class to provide access from my PHP scripts to my database. It's a um, it's a common design pattern called a table a table gateway pattern. And what it does is that it keeps all of my SQL statements for dealing with this table. All of those SQL statements are kept in one class. So they're easy to find, easy to debug. <clears throat> All right, on with it. Create a new class, and I'm going to call this products. Class. Php. Now I know I want at some point, at some times, I want to um, to be able to grab one product by its ID. So I'll make a function get by ID that will um, and that's what I want to use to grab a product by its ID from the table. So it needs a parameter unsafe ID and the SQL statement should be something along now first I need to first I need to um, escape this the whatever I receive here to a safe ID. So let me use the database objects method escape string and pass that the unsafe ID. Now that I've escaped the received ID, I've completely disabled any hackers from um, trying to, to attack my site with SQL injection attacks. So SQL injection is a very common attack form, hack, hacker attack, and it's really, really easy to protect yourself. All you have to do is whatever you receive from your client, that is from a web browser, whatever you receive in whichever way, through a form or through the URL, whatever, Whatever you receive, escape it before you use it in SQL. So to get my ID, let me select all from product, that's the name of my table, where product ID equals dollar ID. That's my SQL statement. I want to run that by my database connection. Get data. And I want to remember the result set I get back. Result equals whatever I get back from get data. What I get back is a whole table. Even though in this case the table would only have one row, but what I always get back is the whole table. So in order to get to just one row, I need to take the result and grab its first row. With that, I can make a new product and pass that row of data to the new product object on instantiation, which I can return. So this is how I can grab one product and return it. So a new product object is what we'll return from here. 
There's one thing missing, missing though. I'm using uh, this DB, and I haven't really set it anywhere. I can do that in a constructor function that can receive a database object, let's call it DB, and store it as a property, this DB equals dollar DB. So now the property this db will be accessible throughout my product class and it will hold an instance or an object, a database connection object, that it must receive when it's create when the product is created. Save and let's just test this before I go any further. I want to see if I made any errors. So I create a new PHP file, not a class, a new PHP file, test products, plural form, since that's the name of my, my new class here, and I want to test if I'm actually able to get products by ID. I can copy most of my previous test and reuse that. I need to include not only product but also product, which is my access point to the product database table. I don't need any SQL since now I keep my SQL inside the product class. I'll no longer have to write SQL statements scattered throughout my system. I'll be keeping SQL statements nicely encapsulated in one class. So no more miss there. Uh, so product equals new product and I need to pass it a database connection. So create a variable product that holds a new product object. And when I instantiate it, that is when I create a new product object, I need to pass it a database connection. Whenever I write new products, I'll really be running the constructor function. That's what will run by default when I create a new object based on the products class definition. And I want to grab just one product <coughs> equals product get by ID and then I need to pass it some ID. Let me just check. Yeah, for product ID number one, I've got my flat wing sand eel. So I'm going to pass the number one to get by ID, the get by ID method of the products class. And what I get back, what I expect to get back, is a product object. And if I get to see the name, ID, details, and price of that object, I know that my new class works. Let's just see here. Test products.php. And there we have it. Flatwing Sandeal with ID 1, details and price. So the method get by ID works. However, if you remember what I'm after, I want sometimes to show all details for a particular product. I don't always know which product, but I want to be able to show all details for one product. At other times, I want to be able to show a list of all product names. So I also need a method for getting all the names of all the products. And you'll notice in the HTML source code here that to make my anchors clickable, I need the product ID. I'm going to use that as a parameter in the URL, as an HTTP get variable. So I need the name 
of all the products and each one product's product ID. Let's build a method for that. Function get all. Let's see. And I want that to return an array list of all products found in the database. First of all, let's select product ID, comma, name from product. And the result is this db get data SQL. So that should give me a result set. I want the output from get all to be an array list. So let's make a new array list here. And then for each for each row of data found inside the result, remember the result will be a well, not exactly. It will be a, a representation of a table from the database with however many rows I've got in my database. So for each one row, <clears throat> I want to create a new product. And I want to add the new product I've just created out of that row. I want to add that to my array list. And once that is done, I can return the array list. So that'll be an array list full of products, however many rows of data I keep in my database table. That looks promising. Let me just see if it actually works. So back to my test products. If I try to get all products, then I should be able to loop over all these products. Oh, hang on. I can't have the same variable name twice. All products. All, each one. Each one is remembered as product. So let me just see here. So create a new product object, which will pro provide access to the database table. <clears throat> I'm going to use the method get all to get back an array list of product objects. One product object will represent one row of data from the table. So here I'm looping through all of my products, remembering each one as dollar product and I'll be echoing out its name and its ID. I can't echo details and price. They won't be available because in get all, I'm only grabbing product ID and name. So it would be impossible for me to echo out details and price. I don't have that available. Let's try. I'd expect to see here in a second Test products. I'd expect to see a list of all of my um, fly fly patterns, as it were, in my database table. So flatwing sandy with ID one, pink pig with ID two, cover bully with ID three, pinky pain with ID four. That corresponds perfectly to what perfectly to what I've got in my database table. So at this point, I have created. A product class that holds the two SQL statements I'll need in order to to get hold of data from my database table. I might need other methods down the line, but at this point, I only need one to get one product by its ID, and another method 
to get all products back. <clears throat> now the beauty of this solution is that I keep all SQL statements for dealing with the product table. I keep that in one file. So if I should get stuck somewhere with my SQL, I can find a colleague that's really strong with SQL who could help me out optimize my queries or could help me build queries I won't be able to do on my own. Um, database expertise is not always found in PHP developers. So one obvious advantage with using the uh, table, table gateway pattern here is that your database expert can easily find all of your SQL statements and work with them. No one will have to uh, look through all of your PHP files to find the SQL statements. They'll be in one central place. All right, enough for now. In my next video, I'll show you how to integrate these two classes, products and product, to the um, actual code in the index and in the catalog of the product here. But that'll be in my next video. Thanks for watching.